The last time we gave you a couple problems to solve. Uh, you were asked to make measurements on the shot record that uh, we've been using for illustration purposes um, and to determine uh, the thickness of the uh, upper layer uh, using three different approaches. You were also asked to note the influence of measurement error on your estimates of uh, layer thickness. Uh, that was the first problem. So let's take a look at that. And <clears throat> the first thing that, that you would do would be to determine the velocities V1 and uh, V2. And then you'd use the uh, following relationships to calculate uh, H. I left off my E there. Sorry about that. Uh, so, so if we uh, take the reflection time intercept as an example, of, uh, and use that relationship in order to calculate uh, the uh, thickness of the layer. Uh, again, uh, we'd be using this formula here. Uh, the velocities, you pretty much, you know, you'll hopefully you've made a copy of the shot record that we have here, and we're able to make measurements. Uh, you can see that if we extend this line over here, that we get a distance of approximately 192. Over here, this is 440. Uh, these times here are approximately 0 0.096. And uh, the intersection of this line here, 0 0.22, coming in just about on that line. So we calculate the delta x, uh, delta t. We get a velocity of 2,000 meters per second. I suspect you got a number a little bit different than that, but you should be close to that. And we do uh, pretty much the same thing. We look at the delta x uh, going from about uh, 1080 to uh, 820 over here, and from 0.335 to 0.4, we have a delta x, delta t of about 4,000 meters per second. Again, your numbers may not be exactly 2,000 and 4,000, but you should be, should be close to those numbers. Now, the intercept, if we're going to use the refraction time intercept approach, we have to go over here and read this number. That was estimated to be 0.128 seconds. So. And then we plug into the formula that we developed for the thickness of the layer using uh, based on the time intercept approach. So we have the intercept time times the product of the velocities over 2 times the square root of the difference of the squares of the velocity. And without just reading off all the numbers here, we'll just kind of show them as we progress. Uh, if you went through the calculations, uh, you would have come up with uh, similar numbers. And uh, I'm getting a value for H from the refraction time intercept approach of 147.8 meters. So again, I think you you guys probably got in the you know in the ballpark there. So again, for using a different uh, approach, um, we've already got these velocities, and the velocities are. You know, aside from measuring off the different quantities like the minimum distance or the crossover point, um, those are the basic data that we use in order to calculate the thickness of the layer. So we've got a thickness of 147.8. Uh, if we use the minimum uh, offset distance here, and I read that off as about 160 meters. And then we've got this, we've already calculated this, the square root of E2 squared minus V1 squared. So we have 160 times uh, 3,464.1 divided by 2 times V1, or 4,000. And I got a value of 138.6. So you can see these two numbers are not equal, and generally you wouldn't expect them to be. You, you, you Depending on how you read off these numbers, even with this... Uh, precise data set. This isn't real data, this is just a synthetic data set. And, and the arrival times are, are, are just 
shown very fairly precisely on the plot, but you have to kind of estimate just exactly where this point is, or just exactly where this x sub c is, and, or just exactly where this time intercept is, so we're going to come up with slightly different answers. Now the crossover distance, this x sub c, uh, I'm using a value of 520, and just using the formula that we uh, developed um, earlier for the uh, thickness of the layer using the crossover distance, and here I get a value of 150.1. So these three estimates, they average to 145.5 plus or minus 6.1 meters. This is just a standard deviation. And this might be a good way to represent your estimate. Uh, if somebody asked you, you collected some data, they wanted to know what the thickness of the layer was, and you used only one approach, you could get you know, 147.8, you could get 138.6. So I would recommend uh, you know, that if you can find the data points to use more than one uh, approach to estimate the thickness of the layer, because uh, you do have some error. Now we did mention the last time around that the we could also use the reflection time intercept. The reflection time intercept here is 0.145 seconds, or that's what I've read it off to be. If you did this, you may have read it off to be, let's say, 0.144 or something like that. So I'm probably going to get different numbers, but uh, I got a thickness here using the reflection time intercept, or the, the uh, value of the reflection at x equals 0 times the velocity in the upper layer, which we measured off the slope of the direct arrival, divided by 2, and I get 145 meters. So you can see that these are you know, very very close to the average estimate that we just got. So, so that worked out uh, fairly, fairly nicely. It's a fairly straightforward process, I think you can see. Now in problem 2, we had to identify the direct arrival, the critical refraction, from the base of the upper layer, determine velocities and estimate the thickness of the upper layer. Now, event A would be the direct arrival. Uh, it's linear, has zero intercept, and an estimated delta t here uh, as we go from this trace to zero of 0 0.0008 seconds. So at x equal 30 feet, so we get um, a V1 of 3,750 feet per second, or 1,143 meters per second. Uh, I'm sorry, that was uh, 0.008 seconds at, uh, at uh, x equal 30 feet. So with that velocity then, so we have the uh, V1, and also event B is going to give us V2, so we have a, a delta T from 40 feet to 80 feet, that's the delta X there, uh, is 0 0.0059, so we're looking at this difference in time here uh, between this arrival and this arrival. So I get 0 0.0059 seconds, uh, this yields a velocity of uh, 6,780 feet per second, um, about 2,067 meters per second. So we have V1 and V2 that we've obtained from this. Now what other data can we use at this point? We don't see a minimum offset. We, we don't see the point of tangency here, in other words, of uh, a critical refraction with a reflection. In fact, we can't really convincingly identify a reflection over in this area. So, However, we could use the crossover distance and, uh, in order to make that uh, calculation. And it's, you know, it's hard to say if you extend these two lines, we don't have a receiver exactly at the crossover distance. So we would continue this line through and continue this line through. And that point of intersection there would be the crossover point that's at a distance of approximately 35 feet and then we just go through we now have the velocities uh, the V1 from event A, the V2 from event B, uh, the crossover distance 35 feet we just substitute into this relationship here 
and um, uh, find that the thickness of the layer is about uh, 2.86 meters. Now, is there another approach that we could use to determine H? So that we could get two estimates. Well, remember we could use the refraction time intercept. And that means, well, we'll take the refraction event, we'll just uh, extrapolate it over to the time axis. Now I had to draw a line in here. This is t equals zero. This is x equals zero. Time at x equals zero. And this would be the line that you would have to use in order to estimate the uh, zero offset uh, intercept time. So we're just kind of, you know, in, interpolating. We have our 0.01 second marks here. This is a certain fraction of this total distance. And, and I get a, um, a refraction uh, uh, time or an intercept time then of 0 0.00458 seconds. Uh, that would give us an, an H based on this intercept approach, uh, just using the relationship for the intercept. Uh, uh, plugging in for the time intercept and the two velocities. And, two times the square root of the uh, difference of the squares, and I get 3.14 uh, meters. So, uh, so we now have two estimates, 2.86, 3.14, and I think you would be, it would be reasonable for you to tell someone that the thickness of the near surface layer is approximately 3 meters. So we did leave you with uh, one final question, and that was, uh, we can see that there's an additional, th uh, a second critical refraction in here, labeled C. It's approximately linear. If you drew a straight line through there, you'd see uh, it may start to come in a little bit early uh, for the longer offsets. But again, uh, we can measure off the delta T uh, over the range that we can observe this critical refraction. So we have this uh, delta x from 9 to 24, about uh, 140 feet. In this case, over this delta t, which is about 0 0.0113 seconds. And that gives us a velocity then for uh, event c of 12,412.4 feet per second. Um, and I'll just make a correction to that on the fly there. So this is uh, 12,412 feet per second, and this is uh, 3,785 approximately uh, meters per second. So we've determined what its velocity is. Um, next time we're going to talk about the uh, two-layer, multi-layer refraction problem. Uh, there are several possible things that we could do next, and that would include uh, uh, looking at some of the limitations of the two-layer problem. Uh, we are assuming that the velocity increases uh, with, with depth. We're also assuming that we have this homogeneous upper layer that could be characterized by a single velocity. But there are two problems with that, and one is that we could have a thin layer in here. Uh, we could have a velocity inversion uh, that we just don't see, and uh, we could also have a very thin higher velocity streak in there which would affect our result. Uh, that would be one thing that we could talk about. We could come back to the two-layer problem and, and introduce some dip, and that would be another uh, topic that we, we will get to. But uh, next time I think we'll take a look at the uh, a two-layer problem that we've been looking at and extend that to mul multiple layers and consider what the refraction response is for uh, the multi-layer problem. So again, I, yeah, I, I hope, you, hope you guys are feeling comfortable with all this. It, it uh, makes, uh, makes good sense. I'm sure you're doing great. Uh, thanks for joining us and uh, see you next time.